I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 5th of May, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. This is Parque Ruben Darío, the first thing you hit when you come into town from Managua. We're gonna talk about that, Kim's trip, and other stuff right after the bump. I wanna take you out of Rio. Vamos a probar un trio. Tú y tu mejor amiga. No quiero nada de lío. Como decían mis cubanos, andando se quita el frío. Vamos a tomar un vuelo hasta España como unos tíos. Aquí gozando con toda mi gente en una nota internacional. Y celebrando nuestra vida porque sabemos que un carnaval. Como anda la cosa a ser. Parque Ruben Darío is a monument to the city's most uh, famous son and to the most important uh, literary figure, certainly in Nicaraguan history and possibly throughout all of the Spanish language world. Of course, Cervantes probably takes that title, but Ruben Darío certainly is in the running. He is considered one of the key people to be like Shakespeare is in English. Dario was born right here in Leon, Nicaragua, on the street that bears his name uh, in the barrio of La Borio, just a few blocks from where I used to live. And so everything in the city of Leon is all about Ruben Dario. There is a major Ruben Dario festival. The giant park as you come into the city is Ruben Dario Park. He has a giant statue, which we will show in another episode. Uh, the main street is named after him, and there is a museum in the house where he was born, and on and on. Plus, the festivals are held here and everything else. So you can expect a lot of Ruben Dario stuff when you're here in Leon. When you're coming from Managua, that is from the southeast, you'll be approaching uh, Leon on the bypass. That is the Pan American bypass. The Pan American Highway uh, is Route 1 as it travels, and hopefully the trucks aren't too loud. Uh, this is actually the Pan American bypass behind me. So the Pan American Highway, or Nicaragua 1, travels all the way from Panama City up through Minneapolis, Minnesota, and on into Canada, uh, becomes Route 35 in the United States. Uh, it is a very important highway, one of the most important highways in the world, and as it passes through Nicaragua, it goes through uh, Rivas, uh, Managua, uh, Esteli, and on up to Tegucigalpa in Honduras. However, there is an alternative route for that, which is Nicaragua Route 3, which continues through Leon, which is a more important city than Esteli, at least population-wise and historically, uh, although Esteli is a larger logistical hub, passes through the corner of Honduras and through El Salvador and up through uh, uh, San Salvador, and then they, the two meet up in Guatemala. That does not make it the bypass, however. It is known as the bypass, not because it's bypassing the Pan American Highway. That would be called an alternative. Uh, but instead, uh, as Route 3 comes through Leon, this is it coming into Leon here behind me. It's going to turn and go up the east side of the city and continue on to Chinandega. It bypasses the city of Leon, hence it is known as the Leon Bypass, or simply the bypass. So everyone here calls it that, and people will say Carretera Bypass and so forth, and they're referring to what is the alternative Pan American. And many people consider this to be the Pan American because for tourists, this is the Pan American that everyone knows, Leon and San Salvador being major tourist destinations, Esteli and Tegucigalpa being major logistics hubs, so they get treated differently. So that's a little bit about that. This is a beautiful park, and I'm only just scratching the surface of it. In today's video, I'm going to walk around it a little bit and show it to you along with this. So they, there's this gorgeous monument here. Right, this is this fantastic monument to Ruben Dario that you can see from everywhere. And then there's four giant fountains, which you can see here, that are off at the moment. But these do run every day. I tried to get out here today, but didn't make it in time, and they shut them off. I did see them running today, though. Uh, so when this is going, it's beautiful with the fountains and the monument. And then there's additional areas to walk around. If you're looking for a place to come out with a lot of safety, during the day. I would not come out here at night, as is the case in any park in any country, right? Going to a park at late at night when it's dark and they're not lighting it up, ah, you may want to be a little bit careful. Now, if there's a lot of people about, this will be really safe. But if you're the only one here, I might not want to do that, right? But there are these beautiful street lights, which you can see all around. I'm going to walk up. We got one right here, right? Right beside me. Beautiful street lights. Uh, a lot of times you see this all lit up. A lot of times the fountains will be on at night. They do a lot of things here. So you may come here and see a lot going on, and it would be absolutely 
absolutely safe and feel free to come out. But if you come out and it's dark, I wouldn't come here. The park along its entire length, not just this portion, is also lined with giant lion statues. Lions being the emblem of Leon. Leon simply meaning lion in Spanish and in French. And so that is the symbol of the city. And you will see them all over the city and the surrounding area because the entire departmento is Leon. Uh, this is there's not a lot of activities here there's no running paths there's no uh outdoor uh entertainment centers there's nothing like that it is simply a beautiful park along the highway it's uh certainly intended for you to come out there's lots of benches it's a wonderful place if you want to come out and picnic but it's located a little bit far away from most things there's no major attractions not even major hotels nearby and so it's a little bit isolated people who are coming out here are going to be walking a little ways it is very close to colonia universidad which i do plan to show you in an upcoming episode, possibly as early as tomorrow, uh, which is the home to uh, the Martin Luther University here in town and all of the housing that goes with that. So the people who live in university in Colonia Universidad can use this park really easily, but it's not really meant to be for them. It is a city park and really its main purpose is to be absolutely gorgeous from the highway as you enter from Managua, because when you enter Managua or Granada from another city, they're not particularly welcoming or special, but when you enter Leon, at least from Managua, not from Chinandega, and those are the only two cities you can enter from, when you get here from Managua, you come into a beautiful park-lined highway uh, with all kinds of just gorgeous stuff going on. And I'm about to show this. We are currently building, I am told, I mean, we are certainly currently building, but I am told this is going to be the singular largest baseball stadium in all of Latin America and it's going up right now right here next to Ruben Dario Park here in Leon. Now Leon is famous as one of the two main cities of baseball in Nicaragua, the number one Latin American baseball country uh, ahead of Cuba, as far as I know, uh, competing with the US for just how passionate they are about baseball, probably ahead on a per capita passionate about baseball uh, perspective. I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see a little bit now as I walk towards the wall. This is the construction wall. Uh, hopefully you can see a little bit of the stadium going up. And Leon has been winning consistently year after year against our main rivals in Rivas. And so Leon also being a much larger city uh, than Rivas and much more a part of core Nicaragua is getting a brand new stadium. Our old one is quite old. I've shown it on the show before and we will show it again. This one's going to take a while to complete, but this has all gone up this year and I'm going to take a moment and put the camera up high so you guys can really see what's going on up there as best as possible. I can't see too much from the ground here, but I'm hoping we got some good shots. But this is going up relatively quickly and we are very excited that we are getting a new, modern, absolutely gorgeous baseball stadium and Managua already has one that is very impressive and this is going to be bigger and nicer and more modern than that one. So we are really proud as a city that we are getting that. We also have, which I will show on some future episode, a new hospital being built here in Leon. Now that I'm also told is going to be uh, very, very large, the largest in the country, possibly the largest in Central America. That feels unlikely and an exaggeration. And I feel like they're taking the information about the baseball stadium and applying it to the new hospital accidentally because both are being built at the same time. But one way or another, we're getting a big modern new hospital here in Leon that is well underway, but we are also getting this mammoth uh, new stadium that we are very, very proud of and excited to have. Uh, the stadium really does make sense as we are consistently the all Latin American champion baseball team year after year. And so of all cities to have that, it does make sense to have it here. We are not big enough to justify the largest hospital, but a large hospital, perhaps. One of the things that's most exciting, though, is with both of these projects, along with the upgrades to the highway, these really show the incredible commitment that the government has to upgrading the quality of life and services around the country. They are a very poor country with very few resources, and yet those things are being put into public works and real everyday things that affect the lives uh, for the better 
of everyday citizens, and it really shows just how an effective government is able to use a tiny amount of money and do an incredible amount of work with it when you don't have so much bureaucracy and corruption with all the money disappearing, as we're used to in the United States with a budget many, many times larger and doing absolutely nothing with it in most cases. Uh, here, they're able to do such amazing things that affect a huge percentage of the population. I know it seems like this is a small number of public works uh, when you look at it from a U.S. perspective, but when you really think about uh, the U.S. and how few people get a new stadium, for example, per capita, how many people get a new hospital per capita, how much are those people paying in taxes per capita, here you're getting far more. Each individual person is getting more from the government's resources than every individual person in the United States or Canada, for example, and yet the amount that the average person pays here in taxes is a tiny fraction of the amount that an American or Canadian pays in taxes, which makes you wonder where is that money going in those countries? How is someone so poor, someone, a country, so poor like Nicaragua, able to do so much effective stuff with their tiny budget? It's an amazing testament to what good organization and low bureaucracy are able to do. They're really able to take those very few tax dollars and put them back into the hands of the populace in a very tangible way that we feel every day. This park really is beautiful, and there are beautiful parks all throughout Leon and through much of Nicaragua. And Nicaragua has been doing a major effort across the country to upgrade their parks. And so you may see new parks or new work on parks happening all over the place. For Samana Santa, we saw the same huge amount of effort going into the Malecons, which are at the beachheads. They're basically the, the uh, piers for the beaches, uh, the place where the public goes and hangs out, much like the boardwalk you would find in New Jersey, except nice, of course, unlike New Jersey. But uh, it, throughout the country and throughout the year, they've been doing massive amounts of work on the parks, which really shows how well the government is doing currently, that the funds are there to be able to do broad work across the country, the incredibly tight budgets of just a few years ago seem to have passed. And so that's very exciting because it's wonderful to see all of that going on, these little communities. This is a big one, but lots of little communities all over the country getting beautiful new parks and new things in those parks, whether they're new fountains, new playgrounds, or whatever. That's just really important to people who often spend their time outside and often use parks and resources in a way that Americans would not do. Putting a new park into a city in the United States may look nice from a distance, but rarely have people in it. Here in Nicaragua, you are much more likely to have people in the park on a regular basis. And for example, while it's relatively empty right now, it is about one o'clock in the afternoon uh, and very, very hot today. There are people strolling around this park and I did see people in here picnicking. Uh, so it is used and earlier in the day when it wasn't as hot and the fountains were going, there were many people walking around just doing uh, kind of a morning constitutional it looked like around the park, which is fantastic. Now today is Saturday and Kim has been here for over a week and early this morning she had to return to Texas. And so uh, we got her to the airport really late last night. Her flight was at just a little bit before two in the morning. She actually didn't get home to Dallas until something like 11 o'clock this morning. So talk about a long day of travel going through the night and then having to do multiple hops, stay in airports and drive to your house when it's all done. That's exhausting. But yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to show this yesterday, and by didn't get a chance, I mean I forgot to show it. Uh, yesterday, uh, Sean and Cindy and Kim uh, came into El Centro, and the girls and I went out and met them at El Sesteo, which is the popular tourist restaurant on the main plaza. And uh, we had a light lunch there, hung out for a little bit, uh, went and got smoothies at Hugoso, which the girls and I absolutely love. That is our smoothie place. And then uh, we did a little bit of uh, souvenir shopping. Kim had not had a chance to do souvenir shopping very much. And I wanted to talk about that for just a minute because here in Nicaragua, we're not a giant tourist country. And so souvenir shopping is not the same as it is a lot of other places. When I was in Guatemala, for example, souvenir shopping was easy. There were shops specifically for that everywhere. Big ones, little ones on the street, full-size souvenir shops nestled into tourist areas. It was super easy uh, to just stumble into one and find a huge uh, array of 
souvenirs. In Guatemala, it was a small number of artisans making the same relatively identical products over and over and over again. So while you could go from shop to shop and maybe have some small variety, the variety was quite small and there wasn't much reason to shop around because the prices and quality remained relatively the same. And all you would do is waste your time moving from shop to shop. Same thing, more or less, we found in Barcelona where every shop was identical. So all attempts at going to a new shop were completely wasted and absolutely silly. Here in Nicaragua, things are a little bit different. There is no souvenir culture. If you go to Managua, you won't find a souvenir shop. If you go to Granada, you will find just the tiniest bit, but it's relatively rare. Here in Leon, it's an effort to find souvenirs. Only so much. If you go to the central plaza, or go to the main markets, they will have souvenirs for you. And they will sell them out on the plaza and you can walk around and anytime you go to a festival, they're selling the same things. However, it's interesting that these are the products they're selling at local festivals, not for tourists from other countries for the most part. And so you're actually getting souvenirs from a city more than you are getting souvenirs from the country. Although there are a million things that say Nicaragua on them, that is because Nicaraguans like to wear things that say Nicaragua. And it's true, Americans like to wear things that say America on them too. But the degree to which people wear Nicaragua stuff, I think is a little bit higher. People are very proud of being from a very small country. And so you get a lot of products that say that less for the tourists, more for the locals. So souvenir shopping here can be a little bit challenging. You really need to uh, be prepared that you're not gonna be able to just run into a shop and not have the same stuff everywhere. You're gonna wanna pay attention and be a little bit thoughtful. There are many leather goods here in the country. We are a beef production country. And because of that, leather is a major industry and you can get a lot of beautiful handmade leather goods. Same as in Guatemala, but here it tends to be more artisans and specialty shops, less going to the market to buy the same thing laid out on the table and more finding a leather dealer and going into their shop and going shopping. Uh, getting the standard things like magnets and shot glasses, yes, you can get those on the square. If you look around, there's a few stalls that sell those kinds of things, but they are rare for the most part. It is not a standard thing and only a few cities are gonna have that. You're not gonna find that in Chinandega. You're probably not gonna find it in Esteli. Definitely not gonna find it in Hinotega, Hinotepe, Didiambra, uh, Baraco, Huigalpa. None of those are gonna have anything. Leon will have a tiny bit, Granada. Some, Messiah has the big craft market, so they're a little bit different. And a lot of people take the time to go to Messiah or the witch villages, which I mentioned in the past episode, uh, because they are the craft and artisan cities. And so people go to Messiah to have them uh, accumulated in a single place and they go out to the witch villages or the Pueblos Blancos uh, in order to see them uh, where the artisans actually are and possibly interact with the artisan themselves, the artists themselves. Uh, but that's pretty much what you do. Other than that, Granada is kind of your hub. And once you're back in Managua, maybe you're gonna have something at the airport that's kind of it. It's not like Costa Rica, where Costa Rican co souvenirs are in every shop, in every hotel. You're not going to go to your hotel and get Nicaragua souvenirs. It's just not going to happen. If someone knows of souvenir shops, because I mean, they must exist, right? Get down there in those comments. I want to hear about it uh, because it's just it's just not really a thing here. And I am interested in where you can get something, where to send people, uh, because um, it's kind of a gap. Americans especially want certain more or less standard souvenirs. They want to be able to get the thing from a place. And, uh, and it's a little bit challenging here, depending on where you go. Uh, I know our beach has nothing. San Juan del Sur, I'm sure has something, but having been there a bit, I, I have no actual recollection of any specific shop selling anything particular. You just have to buy local goods and take them home. Of course, Florida Cana is a big thing to take home, but that's not so much a souvenir, that's just liquor. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, I ask that you take a moment and go up here to buymeacoffee.com slash Miller and consider donating to the channel. And this week more than most, because right now we have a challenge on. We have a new sister channel called Nicaragua 360. That's all one word, Nicaragua 360. Head there on YouTube and check it out. We're really trying to get an initial 100 subscribers so we can get all that initial stuff going with the channel. There's certain things you can't do until you have 100 subscribers. And we need as many views as we can get. So if you go over there, go check it out. Look at the views. It's just quiet sounds or music with these awesome 360 degree views of different locations here in Nicaragua. I'm trying to add a different type of content to what we do here because it's important to be able to show Nicaragua and I think it shows it in a unique way. This week to support that new channel, we've got a sponsor, Mr. Anonymous is asking if people can give 10 coffees or more, which I, I understand is a bit, it's a big donation to the channel, but really, really helps us to get that donation. And for everyone who does that, he is going to match coffee for coffee. 
our goal, and we have had some people do this already, so thank you so much. Our goal is to get to 10 people doing 10 or more coffees. That means a total of 100 coffees being matched for a total of 200 coffees. What are we gonna do with that money other than keep this channel going and make more content for you guys? Well, those are the things that allow us to get more cameras and more equipment and do new and interesting things. Go travel to new locations, film different spots, whatever. The big thing we're trying to do right now is get a used Sony ZV-1 in white because it's the tropics and you need it to stay cool. Uh, and that donation will make that possible. We'll be able to order it in the States, have it waiting. And when my wife returns from Vietnam in July, she'll be able to bring it with her and we will have amazing new ways to make content for all of you, and I enjoy cameras, so it's for me too. So if you would consider sponsoring, this is the time to do it. Never before has it been so valuable to do so, so please consider, it's a big deal. And even if you can't do that, please subscribe and like all the videos that you can. Every little bit makes a big difference, including going over to Nicaragua 360 and helping to promote that channel too. And of course, share on social media and do all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to take today and, and just show a little bit of the views and stuff in Southeast Leon, because so often we are in Western Leon, the very far Western Leon, or maybe El Centro, that there's a lot of the city that we don't get a chance to show. Now coming up tomorrow, my plan, I've not filmed it yet, but my plan is to hike a whole lot of Colonia Universidad and get footage of that for you so you can see a completely different neighborhood in a completely different part of the city with a different lay of terrain and everything near here to this park. I've already got the car down here today, so I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, also, we just posted yesterday a new episode on Drive Warp, which is another sister channel. That one does not have a promotion going on right now, but if you wanted to go check that out, that helps us too. Same thing, subscribers, likes, views, all those things, they help. It is another small channel, it's just Drive Drive Warp, all one word, and we do hyperlapses in the car. Uh, and right now, we've done a number in the United States, but we're doing some in Nicaragua now. And you get this beautiful footage of seeing the country fly by, and it helps you understand what the country itself looks like from the highway. And one of those valuable things when you're visiting a country is hopping in a car and driving a long way. Well, we're making, making it possible for you to do that with us as we do a drive. Last week, I did my border run from here in Leon down to the Costa Rican border at Pinas Blancas. That's where the Pan American Highway crosses the border into Costa Rica. Uh, when we returned from that, on the way there, we had a car load of people. Paul did the driving, and he and Dominica headed to uh, Thailand from the airport in Liberia. But the girls and I went over the border, came back, got back in the car, and we drove the car back to Leon. I filmed essentially that entire drive on the GoPro with the hyperlapse and, and all the, the steady stuff. And it makes for beautiful footage. And we go all the way from the very first shot is sitting at border control in Pinas Blancas. It's actually the wall next to us is the border control wall. And we drive to duty free so you can see where that is. And then we drive all the way up the Pan American, take the Managua bypass, Nicaragua 169, turn left onto Nicaragua 3. The, that's this road right here that you can hear the traffic on, that is the alternative Pan American Highway, uh, also known as the Leon Bypass, as it comes through here. Drive all the way into Leon, through Guadalupe, through the city, into Sutiava, and onto the Ponoloya Road, heading out towards Las Penitas and Ponoloya. The beaches, I don't go all the way out, but we get all the way to the outskirts of the city. So you can see the entire crossing of Leon and the entire crossing from the southernmost point to the western city in Nicaragua, all in a single go, and it's about 15 minutes beautiful, beautiful footage. And you can see where we stopped for some mirror doors that were in the episode that we did about that day. So I'm gonna be showing more of that tomorrow, but this part of the city is very different than Western uh, uh, Leon, where I'm often showing. And it's very beautiful in its own right. And for people who want access to Managua, people who are going to be doing more clubbing or shopping or wanna be more connected to the city or the airport, this part of Leon is actually fantastic. And there's a few things down here that are worth mentioning. One is Colonia Universidad and its associated residencias. One of those is the Residencia San Andreas, which is a very exclusive gated community uh, with heavy guards. We're gonna try to get you some footage inside of there, but it's very difficult. But we're gonna try to get that one in an upcoming episode pretty soon. We're gonna be doing a house tour here in Colonia Universidad uh, of a non-residencia uh, uh, house, Casa Normal, uh, in the community. Um, outside of the gates, that should be really interesting. I believe that one has already rented, so don't get too excited, but you're gonna get to see what life here is like inside a house. Uh, and there is, I hope we get to do this, we will see, there is a, uh, what I call a normal Nicaraguan development. Uh, Castle Nica has a development in this area, very, very close to here, walking distance, but I'm not gonna take you over there by foot today, and I can't show it from here, but it's like within a kilometer. 
Uh, and that is very normal Nicaraguan housing, as we've shown in other areas of the country. Um, we're hoping to do some tours there. I want to get in and see that community. It is really beautiful and uh, an interesting area. And all of that sits uh, what we call outside the city or past the gas station. There is an Uno gas station as you come down the bypass that connects uh, normal Route 3 where it turns and becomes the Leon bypass. That gas station is kind of the marker of the outskirts of the center of the city. Anything out here is on the outskirts of the city. Uh, and the gas station is right over there just past the park. Uh, and, and it's a popular location because it also serves as the southern terminal of the buses. So the buses coming in from uh, Managua will stop there before going on to the main bus terminal because about half the people on the buses disembark on the south side of the city and just catch a taxi or walk to wherever they're going. If they're in Guadalupe, La Barrio, those areas, Universidad, uh, all of this is very accessible by bus. So if you're going to be using the airport or Managua a lot, this area is fantastic because it saves as much as 20 minutes uh, without traffic and as much as 30 to 40 minutes with heavy traffic uh, when you're traveling to Managua because you're already past all of the city. There's no lights out here. There's nothing but open road between here and Managua. So if that's something that you think you're going to do a lot, living on this side of the city makes Managua a very everyday part of your life. And living in Sutiava, where I do, it makes the beaches an everyday part of your life. And if you live on the north side past the Sinsa in an area like Santa Marta, that would make Chinandega and Chichigalpa an everyday part of your life. And then, of course, if you live in El Centro, you kind of give all of it up as being super easy, but get equal access to all of it. Uh, the city is a little bit like a triangle, and choosing the side of the city based on which external resources you're likely to use can be an important factor that who would really think about but it really is important for people living here. Managua is only an hour and a half with no effort whatsoever. From our side of the city, it's much more like two hours, right? That little bit, while not incredibly big, is enough to change your impression from, I'm just gonna run to Managua because it's zero effort in 90 minutes, to, oh, do I really have to go? It's a lot of effort in two hours. That's, that's a sizable difference when making a decision about whether or not you're going to go to Managua for dinner. Right. If you're doing a round trip, that's as much as an hour difference throughout the day, plus a lot of effort. Driving through the city is a lot more work than driving up to the outskirts and not going into the city. So something to consider. So that is for tomorrow. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. Get down in the comments. Ask. Notate. Let me know. Say hi. All that stuff. Share on Facebook. Share on Twitter. Please consider buying me a coffee of all weeks. This is the time. I really want to get that camera. I really want to promote Nicaragua 360. I'm excited about being able to do that for, your, for everybody. I think it's a wonderful, neat, completely different thing than what we're doing here. And I will see all of you from Colonia Universidad as we explore it tomorrow.